candlelight. Jesus, you leave me now, forsake me. Come on. Oh, yes. Come on. Jesus, my life is for your glory, your glory. Hey, Chine Dumo, Chine Dumo. Hey, Jesus, leave me now, forsake me. Whoa, whoa. Jesus, my love is for your glory, your glory. Hey, make the little things I do be less than a big things. Oh, hey, first lady, waste your voice. I like it, oh. Ah, I love the way you did to me, oh. Promotion everywhere. Contract everywhere. Money, money everywhere. You just they lead me, they go. I like it, oh. Ah, I like this grace, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my life is for your glory, your glory. Me and they follow you, they go. I go there, follow you, oh, follow you, oh, follow you, oh. Come on, guys, go ahead and share the broadcast. Invite somebody. As you're tuning in, make sure you're sharing. Make sure you're inviting somebody. Make sure you're engaging. Make sure you engage. Make sure you're commenting. Today, we are breaking the storms of no testimonies from your life. Whatever it is that steals your testimony, whenever God gives you a testimony, they come and they steal it. That's what we are coming to break today. And testimonies are going to flow from your lives. Some of the testimonies you've not even heard. Today I'm going to share them with you. So if you're ready to break the storm, if you're ready to break that spirit of no testimony from your lives, just go ahead and share. God has been wonderful. Today is the day 16. Today is the day 16. It is left with just how many more days? 14 more days and we are done. My God. I just thank God for grace. I thank God for grace. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by the Spirit, says the Lord. Please keep engaging this broadcast. I don't know why you guys are not engaging the broadcast. What's wrong? You don't want to have the broadcast today? I am not seeing engagement. I am not seeing comment on the broadcast. What's going on? And I'm going to be really quick like yesterday. It's going to be like yesterday. If you're not engaging the broadcast, I don't know. I don't know why you are here. If you don't feel like praying, please sign out. But if you're here, try to engage the broadcast. Try to engage. Try to comment. You need to connect to receive. You already know. And I'm just waiting for more people to tune in. I might not be long. Yesterday, it was just an hour. Today, is going to be the same thing. 
I am not going to spend time. I am not going to spend time. So, for those people that feel like, oh, you know what? For those people that feel like, oh, you know what? I thank God when I, whenever I come, mommy will still be there because I know it's going to take time. Yesterday, they were doing, they were all doing a rewatch because by the time they tune in, we were already done with the broadcast. That's the same thing that is going to happen. I have decided I am not going to be staying long because we have 40 days of midnight prayer coming next month. So I am not going to be staying long on the broadcast. I'm going to be really fast for us to go because I mean, I need to consider the data and all of that. We are doing it every day. So let's leave it for the last week of prophecies. Let's leave it for the last week of prophecy. Then we can stay longer. We can stay much longer. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. Let's have 50 people and start for today. Okay, so I just want to thank you guys for your support, for everything. You guys have been so wonderful. I hear some people sending me messages, telling me a lot. But trust me, you guys know that my word is my bond, right? I had already told you people that silence is the best answer to a fool. Silence remains the best answer to a fool. So the best way for you to deal with things is for you to ignore. You can never regret your silence. You can never regret your silence. Trinity say your your beauty your picture is beautiful. Okay. I will use it tonight. I will use it tonight to make a post for you Trinity. Maria liked the yesterday picture and I used it for her today. Okay, I will use this one to make a post tonight Trinity. Okay, so sometimes you need to ignore. When you ignore, you can never regret your 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 silence. But you will always regret your words. But you can never regret your silence. So let's practice what the Bible says. Talk less. Action. Let action be your watchword. Learn to talk less and you will see the mightiest hand of God in your lives. I was saying I need 50 people and I'm seeing 41 people. Wow. Okay. God bless us. God bless us. Somebody is molding the lawn. I don't know. I don't like when I'm coming to do my live broadcast and somebody is molding the lawn outside. It really disturbs me. It really disturbs me. Yesterday I was praying so hard at night. You can hear that my voice is changing. I prayed so much last night. I prayed so much last night. It's affecting my voice. Please just go ahead. Let's get 50 more people and then we start. Okay, please, if you're living in Scotland... If you're living in Scotland, if you're living in Scotland, please make sure that you message me. If you're living in Scotland, make sure that you message me. Um, and I know that God is about to do something. You guys remember that I prophesied that before the end of the week, that something marvelous is going to happen. Silence is the best answer to a fool, the first lady of God. Wow. I love that one. Thank you, my son, for agreeing. Yes. 50. God bless you people. We are here now. We are 50 people. Let's keep going. Okay. So if you keep quiet and always ignore people, trust me, you will never regret your silence, but you will always regret your words. You will always regret your action. But when you are silent, wow, everybody loves this picture. I'm going to use it to make a post tonight. Um, I'm going to make you so i'm going to use it to make a post for you guys today so if you have not ordered your testimony album we are still posting out testimony albums make sure that you order a copy of your testimony album remember on the last day of this program you are going to use the testimony album mommy i like mommy i like the i like you very well oh my god smith and i love you very well too Mommy, you're looking amazing. Thank you, guys. You know, I love you guys. Even family, I love you guys for always standing by me, for always abiding with God, for saving God with me. I love you guys. I can't love you guys enough. Okay, so for the testimony album, we are still mailing them out. Silence is golden. God bless you, Watson. Let me see your locations where you're watching from. Let me see. Please, 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 please. Let me see where you're tuning in from. Today, we are breaking the storm of no testimony. Somebody say, I break the storm of no testimony in my life. 
I break the storm of no testimony in my life. I break the storm of no testimony in my life. I break the storm of no testimony in my life. I break that storm of no testimony in my life. I break that yoke of no testimony in my life. I break that storm of no testimony in my life. So just continue to comment that. Be commenting that on the comment section as we start. So the first announcement is we are still sending out testimony albums if you have not ordered your testimony album please endeavor to order your testimony album if you're watching me from scotland please make sure that you inbox me after this program for those of you in the us your book is already in the us for those of you in the uk your book is already in the uk um mommy name had already given me a message to the following people if your name is um what's the name of this person hold on for me let me pull the name okay so um dot watson dot watson dot watson you paid for your testimony album but you have not contacted to give your address so that they can send it for you testimony album for mario watson mario watson dot watson please go and give your address so that the testimony album can be posted out to you. Announcement number two. Tomorrow is our midweek service. Tomorrow is our midweek and healing service. If you're sick in your body, if you know somebody that is sick, if you know someone that is going through difficult moments in their health, make sure that you invite them for tomorrow's service. Let them come and see God in action. Let them come and see their healing. Let God heal them. Tomorrow is our Holy Communion service. So please prepare your Holy Communion down. 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 Go and get your bread. Go and get your biscuit. You have not given your address. You have not given your address. Please make sure that you message your address to that woman. Call that number and give her your address to post your books. Okay, so get your bread, your biscuits, your cookies, your ribena, your coke, your malt. You see what happened yesterday. You see what happened in the last communion service. A lady could not bend a finger for five good years. Five good years she could not bend. She could not bend a finger for five good years. She could not bend a finger for five years. But after the communion service, instantly she was ill and she started using her finger. I am still going to, I am still going to, I am still going to give my, I am still going to send out those things. So please make sure that you are connecting 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 there is no how you can receive if you don't connect there is no how you are going to receive without connecting the only advice i can give you as you are coming into this ministry is connect and receive connect and receive connect and receive without connection you can never receive you are the next testifier in the name of Jesus. You are the next testifier in the name of Jesus. You are the next testifier in the name of Jesus. You are the next testifier in the name of Jesus. Okay, I don't like when people message me when I'm live. If you are here and you message me when I'm live, I will block you. Let that be the first and the last um, dot. Mario, you message me when I am live because you distract me. Don't message me when I'm live. You can send me a message when you know that I am off, but not when I'm live. Then you message me. You are distracting the broadcast. Okay, so God bless us. If you have any question, if you have any concern... I want you to message me in my inbox. I want you to message me in my inbox. I want you to message me in my inbox. I want you to message me in my inbox. So, 
God bless everyone. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Today is the day 16. I welcome you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we start this broadcast today, hold on, let me close the window. The noise is much. Okay, I needed to close that because they are long, they are mowing the lawn, so the noise is so much coming inside. I just want to appreciate God for the life of everyone. Okay, guys, so today we are breaking the storms of no testimony. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory because you're God all by yourself. Holy Spirit, we love you for who you are and for what you have done. From day one to this day, you have been faithful. From the beginning to the end, you are God all by yourself. From the ends of this world, Father, you have stood. You have fought. You have been victorious. You will continue to win. You have shamed the devil. You have shamed their devices. You have put an end to every storms in our life. That is why we say to you alone be all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are and for what you've done. In this day 16, Lord, as we come to break the storm that is not allowing your children to have testimonies, let there be a breakthrough for them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be a breakthrough for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be a breakthrough for them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a breakthrough for them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we call on the host of heaven. We call on the angels of the Lord to abide with us. I decrease for you to increase, Lord. Take all the glory, take all the honor. The time has come, Lord, for you to speak to your children. I have no word of my own to give to your children. But Father, come and speak to them. Show them how they can break the storm and the yoke of testimonies in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, show them how they can break the storm and the yoke of testimonies in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, show them how they can break the storms and have testimonies in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I know that in the beginning, from the beginning to the end, you have been the God all by yourself. I thank you for the diverse testimonies. I thank you for signs and wonders. I cannot thank you enough, but Lord, I say, let all the glory, honor, and adoration. Be a stripe unto you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless us. You are welcome to the day 16 of this service in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Can somebody help me to brag about this Jesus? Today, I want to brag about this Jesus. I hear people bragging about themselves. I hear people bragging and talking about themselves. But today, I came to brag about this master Jesus. Today is breaking the storms of no testimonies in your life. If the Lord has done something for you in the ministry of Heaven Chapel, begin to send your testimonies in right now. Begin to type your testimony in. If the Lord healed you, if the Lord gave you a breakthrough, if the Lord gave you a job, if the Lord gave you deliverance, if the Lord healed you, whatever God did for you in the land of this Heaven Chapel, I want you to begin to put it down. I want you to begin to write it on the comment section. Begin to write it on the comment section. Somebody let us brag about this God for five minutes. Let's take five minutes and brag about Jesus. People brag about themselves, what they have, how they are used, what they can get, what they have achieved. But nobody takes time to brag about God. Help me and let us brag about God. Let me brag about this Jesus. Let me tell you what Jesus can do. Last year, last year, last year, last year, for the sake of those who are here for the first time and they have never heard this testimony, let me brag about this God a little. Last year, there was a lady. There was a lady. Oh my God, I don't know. I think I will go to my room. I'll go to my room. The noise will not be much in my room. I don't know why this man comes to mow the lawn. <laughs> I don't know why he comes to mow the lawn when I have a live broadcast. I don't know if they sent him or something. So let's come in my room. And very soon he's going to come behind the, my windows in the room. And then I'll get back to the living room. So at least there is no noise here, right? Somebody begin to brag about this Jesus. Just take a moment and brag, and brag about Master Jesus. Let's brag about Master Jesus. Let's brag about this man. 
Let's brag about this man. People have been bragging about themselves. Let us brag about Jesus and make Jesus proud. Somebody help me and brag about Jesus and make Jesus proud. What did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for you? Let me tell you people something. For those of you that have been in Heaven Chapel and you have not read testimonies. For those of you that have not been able to acquire your testimony albums. Let me tell you something so that you know where you are. Some of you, you don't even know where you are. Some of you, you don't even know the grace that is upon this ministry. Some of you, you have not even heard people testify about this ministry. Now listen to me and let me shock you. Listen to me and let me shock you of great and mighty things that God has done. Last year, there was a sister in this ministry. She is a librarian and she lives in the U.S. God used me and spoke in the life of that sister. And God says, God says, be very careful and pray about your family fast. Because something is about to happen. But the sister did not know how she would. The sister was not taking it serious. The sister was not taking it serious. The sister was not taking it serious. Listen to me if it is your first time. I want to tell you the little testimonies. So that you will be able to know that as you are in this ministry. There is a God that answers prayer. Please engage these brokers. Engage these brokers. If this brokers froze or cuts off, I will not come back. I don't like repeating myself. If I say engage the brokers, engage the brokers. What are you doing with your hands that you cannot make use of your hands? The lady came and she was like, my God, my God. He was, she was not like, she just took the prophecy anyhow. But you know what happened? Two weeks after, she had a call from Liberian. She had a call from Liberia that the sister is late. The sister died. They, she went and the sister had an accident and she died. You, and they called her from the U.S. when they wanted to bury the sister. They called her from the U.S. And they told her that your sister died and they are going to bury your sister. When she heard the news that her sister died and they are going to bury her sister. Do you know what the lady did? The lady wrote my name. She wrote my name. And she couldn't even spell the name. She could not spell this name. But she went on Facebook. She opened it and she started because she didn't go to school. She started writing down the name. And when she wrote down the name, she carried the name and she put it in the sister. She, she was not even in Liberia. Listen to me. Oh. She was in the U.S. She called her auntie on the phone. I, if I have a witness about this testimony, say, Mama, I am a witness. Where is Maria? Where is Mary? Where is Mahawa? You people were there where is precious this woman wrote the name my name and put it and told the auntie put this name write this name spelled it for the auntie the auntie spelled it and put it in the casket the sister came back to life the sister came back to life the video is on the page the video is on the page how many of you remember that lady she could not even speak english she came to testify because she could not write her testimony. I have to call a Liberian sister here in, the, in Canada to interpret what she was saying for us. This is the kind of God that we are talking about. Just by writing my name and putting it. Just by writing my name and putting it. Just by somebody say, yes, woman of God. I'm telling you, when you get testimony, yes, Betty said I was a witness. She could not even speak English. I have to call somebody in Canada to come and interpret it what she was saying in Liberian language because she was speaking Liberian English. People could not understand. God, just by writing my name and putting it in the casket, her sister came back to life. The lady has never been able to go to school all her life. She has never gone to school. She, she, anywhere she goes to school, she drops out. She drops out. She drops out. But the Lord told me to tell her that she's going to go back to school. The Lord says, and the Lord said, you are going to go back to school. Today, today, that sister is in the university in the U.S., in her country, she was not able to go to school. But now in the U.S., she's going to school. When God speaks, it comes to happen. And I'm telling you something for those of you that don't even hear about this testimony. There was a day I went live and I said, my God, Lord Jesus, as I'm doing your work, you know that I don't like to drive in the snow. You know that I, I come, somebody help me to brag about Jesus. Today, I came to brag about Jesus. I see men bragging about themselves. I see people giving glory 
glory to themselves. Let us brag about Jesus and what Jesus can do. Let us give glory to Jesus and what he can do. What of mommy Betty? What of mommy Betty? Everybody were dying in our family. And I told mommy Betty, I said, mommy Betty, why are you afraid? Nothing is going to happen to you. You are not going to die. Just go and sow a seed for your life and let God overturn things. And she went, I told her, there is somebody in your family that is going to die again. She said, ah, God forbid. I beg, I cancel it. I say, well, the person is already gone. It's left for you to see. And when mommy, when mommy Betty saw that seed, do you know that the person died? And since that time till today, she is still standing. We had a program in Maryland. I kept this woman on the floor. I saw death coming in her life. I covered the grave. I covered the grave for mommy Betty. After the, the Maryland program, her mother died. What of Mr. Milton? I called Mr. Milton out. I covered the grave for Mr. Milton. Somebody also died in his family. I am telling you the God of testimonies. Why are you not having testimony in your own life? Because you're not a testifier. That is why testimony cannot come. Let me tell you that when you provoke God, God gives you a testimony. What are you doing that you cannot provoke God? What are you doing that you cannot move God? What again can I even tell you? Look at the little girl of 17 years that came. How are about Maria? Maria came with a cancer issue and the Lord located her. She didn't know me from no way. She didn't tell me anything. But God saw what was in Maria's life. And by the time the Lord located Sister Maria, her story was changed from cancer. I am talking about cancer. What is the stupid sickness that is standing in your life? How about the lady with the HIV? Seven days, God says, go and drink water for seven days. I was for at the mountain. Seven days seven days just seven days drink water drink water for seven days this is how hiv left her body what are you carrying on your head that you are here and you don't know that there is a god that scatters the storm you don't know that there is a god that scatters the thunder you don't know that there is a god that strike men down you don't know that there is a god that hands away by fire if you're in the seventh chapel and you cannot draw your faith i want you to draw back your faith look at a lady came to heaven chapel she has gone to school and she fought she had problem in the school with people. She slapped another student in the U.S. In the U.S., you are not permitted to raise your hand on a fellow student. But she slapped a student because of hunger. And they took her to court. Even when she was guilty, I brought her out and I asked the Lord for mercy for her. That case was canceled. That case was dismissed. What are you talking about? Begin to brag about your God. Brag about the God that can make all things possible. Brag about the God that can make impossibilities possible. Brag about the God of healing. How are about me? How about me? With a tube on my chest. Some of you, you have seen the, 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 the video. Some of you, you have seen the testimony. Some of you, you have seen the picture. Where I was carrying tube on my chest for days. For day, for years, two years on crutches. God healed me. So when you come to this ministry... I don't want you to come and look at anybody. I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to know that there is time and chances and it happens to them all. Not to some people, but to them all. 120 something pages of, of this filled with testimonies. I don't know how I can count the testimonies. How many people bought cars in this ministry? How many people bought a house in this ministry? How many people did God give businesses to? I can't even count them. But let me just say the one that is unbelievable. Let me just mention those ones that sound as a lie. That somebody wrote name. Wrote my name. Placed it in the sister's casket. And the sister came back to life. This is not a testimony that was sent. The lady came and gave the testimony openly. What is it that God has not done for you? What is it that God has not done? What is it that God has not done? Some of you, your wombs were closed. It is on this platform that the Lord opened up your wombs. Some of you, you were supposed to die, but God canceled death for you. Some of you, you were supposed to be disgraced, but God turned it into something else for you. And yet, you cannot celebrate. Some of you, they have already taken your marriages and said you will never marry. But God released your marriages. The only thing that you are not a testifier. You are not a testifier. When you are not a testifier, God cannot bless you more. Without testimony, you limit testimony. Little testimonies give birth to big testimonies. 
Don't allow anybody to deceive you and say, how I'm feeling light is not a testimony. I was having headache and my headache is gone. It's not a testimony. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Don't allow anybody. When God does something small for you, testify, you will see a bigger one. When God does something for you, testify, you will see a bigger one. When God does something for you, testify, you will see a bigger one. Little testimony gives birth to big testimony. I remember the other time, I saw a man in the hospital and the man was putting a catheter in his penis. And they says for the, for the time that this man is going to live on earth, this man will not be able to make use of his penis. He is going to be peeing through the help of Kadeta. He cannot make use of his penis again. And I went there and I saw this man. And I said, in the name of Jesus, the Lord did not create you with a Kadeta. Any spirit of sickness that has made you to carry Kadeta, that has made you to carry urine bag, and you are walking around with a urine bag, I cause that urine bag be scattered in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of diabetes that has rendered you into this thing, that has brought you shame for you to be carrying a urine bag under your trouser, for you to be carrying a tateta in front of your penis, I destroy them in the name of Jesus. And the man was ill. He went back to the hospital. When he went back to the hospital, the doctors were surprised. They said, oh, we can now remove the cardiator. And they took away. They took the cardiator off. And that is how he started peeing. He started peeing on his own. He was able to pee without the help of the cardiator. I don't know what is covering you. I don't know what grace is under you. But I want to tell you something. In order for you to receive testimonies in your life, you need to be a testifier. Small testimony gives birth to testimony. Why you are not testifying? Why testimony is not coming your way? It's because you're not a testifier. Why testimony is not coming in your roof? It's because you don't thank God for what he does. Why testimony is not coming your way? It's because you are not a, a grateful soul. And when you don't show your gratitude to God, he doesn't move God. If you can celebrate grace and then you provoke grace, don't you know that when you testify, you provoke God. When you testify, you provoke God. If a man of God, if a woman of God, if somebody, if somebody can come out and say, I need you to provoke my grace and you provoke the grace of that person and that person begins to do signs and wonders. How about your creator, the doer of all these things? Who is the doer of all these things? It is God the Father. It is God the Son. And it is God the Holy Spirit. All glory must be to the Lord alone. For he is the doer of all these things. We are just being used. We are just being used in the kingdom. It is God that does this thing. Not somebody saying, Oh, you don't know what God is doing. Have you not seen what God is doing? Have you not seen what I, am, I have been doing through the lives of people? No, you are not the one doing it. God is the doer of all these things. And when you receive these things, go back to God in gratitude. Go back to God in gratitude. Today, I wanted people to boast about God. I wanted people to brag about this God. I wanted people to give glory to God. I wanted people to say, Father, thank you for healing my children when they had stomach pain. Thank you for healing me of that headache. Thank you for healing me of that cancer. Thank you for healing me of that stomach pain. Thank you for the leg pain you cured me. Thank you for my deliverance last week. Thank you for the things you did. Thank you for the ministry. Thank you. I just wanted people to brag about this God. Do you know the unseen battles that God fights for you? Do you know the victory that God gave you over the dream? Do you know the attacks that came at night? Do you know how many people want you dead? Do you know how many people want you to go? Do you know how many people plan accidents for you? Do you know that headache that came, what it was meant for? Do you know the leg pain that had happened? We just need to brag about this Jesus. Somebody take a minute or two and brag about Jesus for keeping me alive till today. Father, thank you. For the testimonies that you have given in my life, Father, thank you. The ones I did not mention and the ones that I have mentioned, thank you. Just brag about this, Jesus. You are breaking the storms of no testimony. Testify today and let the Lord give you a testimony. Just drop a testimony for the Lord today. Let the Lord give you another testimony. You are alive not because you are worthy. You are alive not because you are perfect. You are alive not because you are better than any other person. That is a testimony. Life is a testimony. 
The gift of life. Life is a gift. The gift of life is a testimony. Father, for the unseen battles is a testimony. You drive out and you come back is a testimony. Just brag about this God for a little while. Some of you, from the time you were born till this day, you have never given thanks to God. Go and read the book of Psalm and see how David thanked the Lord. David was thanking God in and out. Every day, David gave thanks to the Lord. Every day, David came with a drumming, with a sound of drum to the Lord. David praised the Lord with, with at midnight. David praised the Lord during the day. David kept thanking the Lord because he knew what thanksgiving meant. David knew what thanksgiving meant. Let us see what the Bible is saying. Let us quickly go to the book of Psalm. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. People of God, without you being thankful, you can never receive more testimonies. You need to be thankful. Some of you are in great. Some of you are in great. Even in real life, you do the same thing to people. Even if people give you a gift, it doesn't mean anything for you. For you, it's too small. Some of you, you don't have a heart of gratitude. You can never tell your husbands thank you. You can never tell your wives thank you. You can never tell your sibling thank you. You cannot thank people. Left alone thanking the Lord. It has become an habit for you. Ingratitude, ungratefulness has become your lifestyle. You are not grateful to God for the things that God does for you. You need to be grateful to God. You need to be grateful to God. For the food on your table, you are a testifier. For the food that he provides for you, you are a testifier. For the shelter above your head, you are a testifier. For the things that God has given to you, the money in your pocket, you are a testifier. He took sickness away from you. He took the grave away from you. He discharged you from the hospital. He healed you of coronavirus. Look at the case of Evan Chapel. Five corona cases the Lord healed. Five corona cases the Lord healed in this Evan Chapel. Five corona cases the Lord healed. You cannot testify. You cannot thank him. You cannot sing. You cannot drum brass. David sang and praised God with brass. David used all manner of instrument to praise God because he knew what it means to be a testifier. Some of you, we are, you, some of you, you are so ungrateful. You can't even tell people, thank you. You cannot. And that is the same thing you do to God. Tell me if you were the one, if you are a father, if you are a mother. And somebody came and did something to you. And the person did not tell you thank you and it's your child. Another day, will you give that child something? Me, 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 me. If I have a friend, if I have somebody in my life who does not understand my word, who is not grateful when I do things, I cut you off because I hate some grateful people. Everybody likes their gratitude and out of gratitude makes you have more. An act of gratitude makes you not lack. An act of gratitude makes you have people. An act of gratitude makes people love you. An act of gratitude makes people appreciate you. When you give God the glory, when you testify to God's glory, when you look, look, and look, and look, at so many people died in the world. But as the people connected, as they connected, look at the woman with the inflammation issue. With severe pain for months. She was taking medication to sleep. She could not sleep. But when she came to Evan Chapel. Just by the anointing. The anointing water. The blood of Jesus and the Holy Communion. She was ill instantly. The pain was gone. Inflammation issue gone. Till today she's not having it again. So many people like that. It is not everybody that comes back to testify. But very few comes back. Out of the lepers that Jesus healed, how many people came back? Ungrateful people. Nobody wants to have an ungrateful person by them. It is better for you to be alone than to have people that are ungrateful. That is the same thing with Jesus. He says it is not all those that says, Lord, 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 that will enter into the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. It is not because people call you mommy, meaning they love you. No, don't be deceived because people say I do this. They love you. No, that is not love. 
Love is action. Love is action. God did it for you. Did you thank the Lord? How many people were a witness? Don't thank the Lord in your closet. Jesus does not live in your closet. David did not thank the Lord in his closet. He thanked the Lord openly. He gave thanks to the Lord openly. That is why we have the book of Psalm today. That is why we have the book of Psalm today. If David did not put it into writing, will you read it today? No. So learn to be a testifier. Learn to be have a heart of gratitude. Don't be an ingratitude human being. Be grateful when God heals you publicly. When God gives you a testimony, share it in the public and shame the devil. The Bible says that we overcome the devil by the words of our testimonies. You need to be a testifier to move God. You need to be a testifier to open heaven. That is why I love my daughter, Mahawa. She is a testifier and if you look at her life, it is different. She's always testifying. The other day, I gave an assignment on this broadcast and I said, all of you should go and wash your face. Take a picture of before and after and send to me. Mahawa is the only person who took that picture of before and after and sent to me. And that is the picture I keep on the floor every midnight. I use it to pray for her. I have not even posted it. I am going to post it. So when you say, oh, mommy loves some people, mommy doesn't love some people. Every mother will love a child that is obedient. Every mother will love a child that is obedient to her. Don't want to get in the acts of people when you cannot do the things they expect you to do. Don't expect to get in the life of people, in the heart of God. Don't want to be God's favorite when you cannot do the things that God demands of you. But you want to be God's favorite. Some of you, you come to me, you write me a letter. Mommy, I want to be your spiritual child. Mommy, I want to be this, I want to be that. Yet, you don't share the video. How do you want to be a spiritual child to a person that you don't share the video? How do you want to be my spiritual child and you don't partner with me? This is the thing we do about God. On gratitude. And when, you, and when you start giving the person that gives you attention, it becomes a problem. Everybody becomes jealous. But you have forgotten that, oh, Marawa is a testifier. That is why mommy loves her. She obeys mommy. That is why mommy loves her. Every mother will love a child that is obedient. Every mother is after a child that listens to her. You can give birth to 20 children. You can give birth to 200 children. It is only few that will love you. And those ones who listen to you, they win your heart. Because they listen to you, they respect you. Even if she's not, let me tell you the level of which somebody can connect. Let me tell you what this lady does. Sometimes she's not even on the broadcast. She'll come and message me. Oh, mommy, I was not on the broadcast. I'm going to do a replay. And I'm going to rewatch it. And she will go and rewatch it. You think she's doing it for me? No, she is connecting. Because she knows what God has done for her through this ministry. It was in this ministry we prayed and she bought her car. She was crying every day. Oh my God, I don't have a car. It's only one car. I can't carry my children to church. I always stay back from church. I say, my daughter, hold on to God. Everything will be good. She's not even connecting like before. Initially, my daughter, she was sowing her children's life into this ministry directly. How was she doing that? By giving me water in this ministry to drink on behalf of her children. Go and look at the life of those children. When I went to Maryland, I saw those children. I was telling her, can you see how these children are? Can you see how your children are? So you need to connect. The Bible says when you, when you, when you connect, Philippians chapter 1 verses, when you connect, you are drinking the grace directly. How can you be, you write me a letter that you want to be my spiritual daughter. You want to be my spiritual son. You are not even in my partnership. You will come and be disturbing my line. No. Connect and receive. I am not doing miracle here. I am not doing miracles. I'm not doing magic. You need to connect to receive. Nobody can receive for you. Nobody can pray for you as much as you can pray for yourself. When we keep prayer, come out and pray. You wrestle against principalities and powers in high places. 
told the Lord. Don't tell the Lord to give you a testimony when you are not a testifier. Don't tell the Lord to give you a testimony when you know deep inside that you are not going to testify. Yes. Look at it among your children. Even in a daily relationship. Where are the men, please? Where are the men? I need the men to speak. I need the men to comment. If you have four girlfriends, who will you love the most? If you have four girlfriends, who will you love the most? Who will you marry? Is it not the one that listens to you? Is it not the one that obeys you? Is it not the one that shows you love and care and support? Look at my daughter Amara that just came on this platform. I never told Amara, Amara, go and do something on the page. Amara, go and write something on the, on the group. No, I've never told her. Even the people that I called a meeting, I said, oh, I am so tired. You people should be helping me. Engage that group. They did not do it for me. They didn't do it. But Amara came from nowhere. I have never instructed her. I have never called her to say, can you help me to do this? But she started doing it. And that is how I noticed her. Tomorrow now, if I start liking her, it's a problem. You are jealous, but you can't do what you are doing. So let us learn to put these things in our lives. You cannot be bad to a man and you expect that man to marry you. No. You cannot be bad to your parents and you expect your parents to buy you things. No. You cannot be bad to a person. You disobey them. You don't care. Whatever they tell you, you don't care. You want to be yourself. Then be yourself. But when you respect people, when you love people, when you love people, you respect. Love is respect. Love is respect. Love does not challenge. Love is obedience. So for those of you that cannot testify, it's because you do not love Jesus. It's because you do not obey Jesus. It's because you do not listen to his instruction. That is why you don't obey his commandments. But if you love the Lord, you will know what the Bible says. You will follow the scripture, not what your people are telling you. Some people will even be bold enough to say, oh, somebody said that that is not the right way. I'm so disappointed. That is somebody says that, no, it shouldn't be like that. It is not about people. It's about God. Even with your husbands in the house. That is why your husband has a side chick outside. Because you cannot respect your husband. You don't hear what your husband is saying. That is why your husband has a girlfriend. And when he tells this small girl, stay here, they stay. And you are complaining. My marriage is this, my marriage is that. My husband is doing this, my husband is doing that. Because you are not obedient. You don't listen to him, you don't respect him. When he gives you money for food, you don't say thank you. When he does buy things for you, you complain. The heart of gratitude is what breaks a person. Me, I love, I don't know. Even if you give me a pen, I am very appreciative. I love gifts. I don't care about the, 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 the value. I don't care about the quantity. But the love of giving it, that is what I look at. So don't look at the, the thing and say, oh, this one is a small testimony. How come God just healed me of headache? Do you know if that headache was to make you to go mad? And God healed it for you. Learn to be a testifier. In order for you to get more testimony. Learn to be a testifier. The book of, the book of Psalm chapter 107 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? That is a question. Please open your Bible to the book of Psalm chapter 107. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. The Bible did not say put it in your house. The Bible did not say go and share it to your cousins. The Bible did not say go and share it with your wife. He did not say, go and share it with your siblings. He says, speak it out. Speak it out. Has the Lord redeemed you? Speak it out. Some of you are so worldly. You go with people that are in the world. Anything they tell you, you take it. You refuse to open the Bible and tell them, no, my cousin is not like that. No, my sister is not like that. No, my brother is not like that. No, my neighbor is not like that. Let us see what the Bible is saying, not what we are saying. Know what the woman of God is saying. Let us see what she's saying. Is it in the Bible? Psalm 107. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Tell others. My God. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep God's testimony to yourself. Tell it to others. 
What God has done, tell it to others. God cannot ride your car. God cannot come and take the money that he gave you a job. God cannot come and live in your house. But God can only take that testimony. God cannot take away that testimony. God bless you. Come in. May the Lord go with you. God cannot come and eat your money and your house and your car. No. It is only that testimony that God can take. So speak it out. Has God redeemed you from your enemies? Tell it to others. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some ponder in the wilderness, lost and homeless. Some people are in the wilderness, lost and homeless. Some people are hungry and thirsty. They, are, they, they nearly died. Lord, help, they cry in their trouble. And he rescued them from their distress. He lead them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love, for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest ground, in prison, with, uh, in, prison in iron, chains of miseries. They rebel against the words of God. Scorning the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. That is why he did what? He broke them with hard labor. Some of you, you are suffering today as a result of no testimonies. Some of you, the reason your life is hard is because you are not a testifier. Did you see what the Bible says? He broke them with hard labor. Hard labor. Because when God did that for them, when God delivered them, they could not see it. When God delivered them, they did not testify. When God delivered them, they were not grateful. And now God brought hard labor on them. Some of you, you are suffering as a result of hard labor. Some of you, you're, the hard labor that you are into today is because you refuse to testify to God for the job that God did for you. The testimony that God gave you, you hid it, you did not testify. And now you are suffering in hardship. Your marriage is broken. Your relationship is broken. You don't have a job. You don't have a home. You don't have a car. Because you were ungrateful when God gave you all these things. When God gave you that house, you did not come and testify. When God gave you that car, you did not come and testify. When God gave you that job, you did not testify. When God healed you, you kept it to yourself. The Bible says affliction will arise the second time. If you are a testifier, affliction will not arise the second time. If you are not a testifier, affliction will come again. Affliction will come again. Some of you, you ask God to give you a job. As soon as God gives you a job, you forget to pay your tithes. You are ungrateful. The job that God gave to you, 10% is not for you. 10% of your income from your job is for God. If you don't give it, you will suffer. If you don't give it, you will lose that job. If you don't give it, you will not have benefit. If you don't give it, you will not have entitlement. If you don't give it, you will not have promotion. Because nobody is praying for you. There is no coverage on your head. No grace is speaking on your head. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you cannot change the Bible. The Bible has already been written for thousands and decades of years. People are reading it. You cannot change the scripture. You can't change the scripture. There is nothing you can do. You can't change the scripture. Whether you admit it or not, whether you reject it or not, whether you declined it or not, you cannot change the scripture. It is already written. And it was written. Please keep on engaging the brokers. We are losing network. We are losing network. Keep on engaging the brokers. That is why they broke them with hard labor. Sometimes you will hear them. A servant of God will come and preach. Who will preach and preach and preach. A preacher, a laborer, is worthy of his or her, uh, of our wages. A laborer is worthy of his or our wages. A laborer is worthy of his or our wages. Where do you want them to go and take from? You want them to go and steal? When I leave the ministry, when I finish preaching, you want me to go and steal? No, it is you that God has blessed to bless me. I cannot be sitting here praying for a job whilst you are busy enjoying in your house, but you forgot the source of the prayer. 
You forgot the source of the blessing. When you forget the source of the blessing, God is not happy with you. And that is why you begin to see. It's when you cheat a person, God begins to cheat you. Problem begins to come in that job. And now you remember, you say, oh, it was mommy Evan Chappell that prayed for me. Oh, let me go back and tell her that I, I'm having issues in my job. Come back and tell me that you're having issues in your job. When you got the job, did you remember me for one day and say, woman of God, God gave me a job through you. This is my titan. No. You, you, some of you will not even come back and testify so that they will know that you have a job. But as soon as you have problem, you remember they wrote to the church again. No, you will break. You will continue to be afflicted because there is nothing that is devouring the, 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 the devourer. Nothing is devouring the devourer for your sake. And then you will continue to lose your job. You go into a job three months, one year, they lay you off. Then another time you start all over again, you start looking for a job. You start all over again, you start looking for a job. Meanwhile, if you have preserved your job in the hands of God, God would have kept and secured that job for you. But you prefer to start all over again because of selfishness, because of self-centered, because of ingratitude, because of ungratefulness. That is why you cannot get promotion in that job. You cannot get multiplication in that job because you have refused. You have refused. You have refused to see God in that ankle. And that is why you suffer. That is, that is what the Bible says. The Bible says they rebel against the word of God, scorning and counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They rebel against him. That is why he broke them with hard labor. Please open the book of Psalm and read it for yourself. Psalm 107. Read it for yourself so that you can understand. He broke them with hard labor. Hard labor. Hard labor means struggle. Hard labor means struggling. Hard labor means doing something that they, is not worth it. You are working for peanuts. Your salary cannot even, it's not even enough for you. Because you rebel against God's word. What is God's word? God's word is 10% is for him. God's word is be a testifier. God's word is thank me in the congregation of many. But you rebel against it. And now hard labor came upon you. Hard labor came upon you. Because you rebel. Please, I want every one of us to go and read the scripture. Uh, sometimes we are the one that is limiting our breakthrough. Sometimes we are the one keeping our testimonies. Sometimes we are the one that cannot testify. So you see, when you don't know the Bible, when you don't know the Bible, you will sit down on the internet and you will listen to every complete, uh, um, how do they call it? You will sit down and listen to every advert. You will sit down and listen to any video that is talking about nonsense. Because you don't know the word of God for yourself. You will see people scandalize titan. You will sit down and listen. Because you don't know the word of God for yourself. But if you know the word of God, you will just go there and put it for them. And say, go and read this. Go and read that. Let the word of God speak. Sometimes you don't need to waste your time to speak. Just give people the word of God like I'm giving you right now. And you will see it for yourself. So long as you are under the sound of my voice and you hear this word, you are under judgment. Judgment has come upon you because you have heard this word today. It is not that you do not know, but it is because you are rebellion against God's word. Now, it is not because I didn't know. If you hear this word today and you don't practice it, it is because you have rebelled against God's word. And at labor is what is going to come upon you. I am not the one saying it, but that is what the Bible says. They rebel against the word of God, scorning the counsel of the most high. That is why he broke them with hard labor. He broke them with hard labor. He broke them with hard labor. 
Are you going through hard labor? Are you not having testimony in your life? Are you filled with sickness? Is your income going without you doing anything? Are you stagnated in your job? Are you not having testimony in your house? That means you have rebelled against God's word and he has brought hard labor upon you. That is why you are having that minia job because you rebel against God's word. That is why your marriage is suffering because you rebel against God's word. That is why you don't have a testimony because you rebel against God's word. You are not a testifier. Henceforth, the Lord cannot give you a bigger testimony because you did not appreciate the little testimony. God says, no, how can I do more for somebody that did not appreciate it? In order for you to have a bigger testimony, you need to appreciate the small testimonies. Be a testifier. When Jesus did it for J David, David did not go to his house and tell it to his friends. He did not tell to his family. David came and tell it in the congregation. That is why we have it today. And the Bible speaking in Psalm chapter 107 verses 1. He says give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endure it forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Tell others the Lord did not say, keep it to yourself. He said, tell others. How are you going to tell others? By sharing the testimony in the congregation of God's children. Let your testimony strengthen the faith of another person. Maybe there is a brother that is going through the same thing. Maybe there is a sister that is going through the same thing. When the Lord redeems you, tell it to others. Don't keep it in your house and say, oh no, I, 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 I am shy. Oh no, I cannot testify. Oh no, if the testimony is too little. So you are telling God that God did little for you. You are telling God that God does not know what he did. You are telling God that God made a mistake. This is what you are telling God. And I'm so sorry for the people who support you to do evil. Because the Bible speaking in Psalm 1 says, the one who is supporting you to do evil and the one who is doing evil is the same judgment. It's the same judgment. Don't fear people, fear God. Tell them the truth the way it is. Don't be afraid to tell them the truth. Anytime, tell them the truth. They did not call you, God called you. By the time they know the truth, it will be too late for them. By the time they discover the truth, it will be too late for them. They will even be looking for you to say, hey, woman of God, I'm sorry. Oh, that thing that you taught us is really true. Do you know that it's after five years I realized the truth and I'm I've been looking everywhere to tell you. You need to break that storm of no testimony. You need to break that storm of no testimony. You need to break that storm of no testimony. The God that the lady wrote my name and put and her sister came back to life. Is that not the same God we are saving? The God that healed the little girl from 17 years of leaping. Is that not the God we are saving? The God that healed Sister Martha from the hand that she could not bend. Is that not the same God we are saving? God has not changed. He is the same God. But why can you not receive? Because of your ungrateful attitude. Because of your lifestyle. Because you are not a testifier. God says, no, I cannot continue to do it. You need to be a testifier. To break the storm of testimony, you need to be a testifier. You need to give thanks at all times. When people do something for you, be, be appreciative. Thank them. It, it might not mean anything to you because you are not a, you are not a grateful person. If somebody gives you 30 minutes because you are not a grateful person. You are demanding for 30, 30 days. But when you are a grateful person, even if somebody gives you a dime, you will appreciate it because it is not the act of giving, but the act of giving. It is not the act. A-C-T is not the word, but H-E-A-L-T is the word. It is not the art of which you give, but the art in which you give. It is not the art of which you give, but the art in which you give. So appreciate the art. It might not mean anything to you, but maybe that is when they would have gone to write something. Maybe that is when they would have gone to sleep. Maybe that is when they would have gone to eat. Maybe that is when they would have used it for anything else, but they used it for you. They used it for you. So you need to show that gratitude to God. 
You need to show that gratitude to your husbands. You need to show that gratitude to your children. You need to show... Some of you, you can't say thank you to your children because they are your children. No. Some of you, you can't say thank you because you feel that you are the superior and all these people are nothing. No. You need to say thank you to your children when they do something good. You appreciate them. You buy them snacks. Everybody loves to be appreciated. How do you feel when I appreciate you on the broadcast? Don't you feel happy? I, don't you feel happy when I come and say, Oh, Amaka did this. Oh, sister, this did that. Oh, brother, this did that. You feel happy. I see my son, Stephen. I see my son, Stephen. From the day, God bless him with a job in this ministry. He doesn't joke with his titan. Even if it's small that is coming in, he gives what belongs to God to God. He does not joke with his titan. And that is why no matter how things are hard, God will always make a way for him. Why? Because the devourer is broken. Learn to be a testifier. Even if it is headache and people feel that, oh, headache is not enough for you to testify. Somebody says feeling light. Feeling light is not a testimony. It is a big testimony. Do you know what it means for your body to be heavy? And before the end of the service, you feel light. That is a big testimony. God is a story changer. When you appreciate God, God opens door for you. He breaks the storm. He breaks the spirit. God likes a thankful heart. God likes a cheerful giver. Thanksgiving moves God. I used to go to a church and I would go and stay. I would go out and I would say, for the things that are about to receive, for the things that God is about to do, I thank God. I am thanking God for a job I'm about to get. Do you know how heaven is happy? And God is sitting in heaven and saying, wow, I did not even give her the job. She said, for the job that you are about to give me, for the job that you are about to give me, for the job that you are about to give me, for the thing that you are about to, for the things that we are about to receive, we thank you, O oh Lord. Do you know what manner of prayer is that? Praises moves God. It moves God. It breaks storms and opens door for you. So God says that. I did not say it. Today we are talking of Thanksgiving in the book of Psalm chapter 107. Lord, and then they were wounded. That is why what? They fell. And no one was there. And what? So when the people rebel against the word of God, God brought them with hard labor. They fell and no one was there to help them. When you rebel against God and you fall, nobody will be there to help you. They fell and no one was there to help them. Lord, help they cry in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He led them from darkness and deepest crown. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love. For his wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze. And he cut apart their bands of iron. Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered from their sin. Don't be a fool. Don't rebel and suffer from your sin. The Bible says some were fools. Some were fools. They rebel and suffer from their sins. Don't be a fool. Don't fall. Don't rebel from your sins. Some were fools. They rebel and suffer from the, for their sins. They rebel and they suffer for their sins. You see that some of us, we are suffering because of our sin. Some of us, we are suffering because of our sin. We are suffering as a result of our own sin. They couldn't stand the thought of food. They couldn't stand the thought of food. And they were knocking on the dead's door. Lord, help. They cried in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the doors of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love, for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. Some of you don't even offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. 
Some of you cannot even say, I want to offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. How many of you? How many of you have given God a sacrifice of thanksgiving before? Let me see you. I have given God a sacrifice of thanksgiving before. Let me see you. I am coming to tell you the Bible, not what they are saying. I am not interested in what people cook up and come and sit down and say. I am interested in what the Bible is saying. Let us hear what the Bible is saying. Not what people are saying. Not what the preacher is saying, but what is the Bible saying? How many of you have offered God a sacrifice of thanksgiving before? I am giving God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. How many of you have done it before? No. Even the one he did for you, you did not even testify with a thanksgiving. Left alone a sacrifice of thanksgiving in advance. The one he did for you, you could not even testify with an offering. Left alone to say, I am giving God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. How many people? They have not taught you Bible to that level. They, have only, they are only teaching you about signs and wonders. They have not taught you how you can provoke God's throne. They have not taught you how you can provoke the throne of God and take your blessings. They have not taught you that giving can provoke angels to release your miracle. You think miracle comes by deliverance alone. You think the, the miracle comes by prophecy. You think miracle comes. No. Miracle comes by hearing the word of God. Preaching the word of God and practicing the word of God. At the end of the world, prophecies, deliverance, speaking in tongues, they shall pass away. The word of God is the only thing that will be constant. Practice the word. Leave signs and wonders alone. You will miss your way. You will miss your salvation. You will lose it in life. Practice what the Bible is saying. I am a prophetess. I, God uses me. But I can read you in the book of Re Revelation. Where the Lord made me to understand that. In the last days, many shall come in my name. Casting out demons. Doing signs and wonders. He says all of this shall pass away. All of this shall pass away. Prophecy shall pass away. Speaking in tongues shall pass away. Signs and wonders shall pass away. There shall be no deliverance again. But you see the word of God. The word of God is forever. Grow in the word of God. Grow in the principles of God. Let the word of God keep you. Whether they are prophecies, whether they are speaking in tongues, many will come in my name to cast out demons. Many will come in my name to say I said. Many will come in my name. Many will come in, in different way using my name because when they use the name of the Lord, people will gather, people will come, people will behave. But at the end of it all, all of this shall pass away and the word of God shall remain forever. That is why I plant you on the word. That is why I bring you up in the word. Let us hear the word of God. The Bible says in the book of. Oh my God. Why did it cut off? After we have read the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. After we have read everything. It says what? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. What are the commandments of God? Let us begin to read where we stop. Let us continue and hear the word of God. Let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. And sing joyfully about his glorious heart. And sing joyfully about his glorious heart. How many of you have given God an offering of sacrifice? Sacrifice of thanksgiving. How many of you, you see anytime I go to Nigeria, I go and do a thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Anytime I go to Nigeria, I gather my family and we go to church and we thank God because it's not easy living in a strange land all by yourself and the Lord preserve you and he brought you back and you met your family and everyone is complete. You need to thank him. It is not by your doing. It is not because you were careful. It is not because you know how to cross the road. It is not because you were watching over yourself. Have you ever slept with somebody at night? When the person goes to bed, the person forgets about you. They snore and they forget about you. But you wake up still in the morning. God preserve you. You don't know how many chickens came. You don't know the witches and wizards. You don't know the storm. That thing that fell on your roof, do you know what it is? That thing that fell on your roof and you heard boom 
on your roof. And the next thing you heard, broke, 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 it fell. That house help that is living in your house, do you know who the house help is? Some of you, you are living with a witch mother. Some of you, you are living with a witch father. Some of you, you are going to a witch church. Some of you, you are dwelling with witches. But God preserve you. Is it not enough for you to thank God? Is it not enough for you to worship God? If you don't thank the Lord, you limit your testimonies. Today, we are talking about the storms that is not allowing you to have testimonies. The storm of no testimony is what we are breaking today. And then you begin to walk around. You don't have testimonies in your life. You begin to walk around. Everybody are testifying. The people that are testifying, is it not in this same heaven chapel? Why are you not testifying? The people that are having the miracles, are they not in this same heaven chapel? Why not you? Ask yourself, why not me? There is something that you're not doing. Ask them, what are you doing that I'm not doing? Connect. I ask you, connect. Connect. You cannot be celebrating. You cannot celebrate grace and be disgraced. The grace you celebrate must work for you. The grace you hide must hide from you. Hey, hey somebody write the version of the first lady. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. And the grace you hide will hide from you. Can somebody write it down for me? The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. The grace you hide will hide from you. Write it down for me. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you, but the grace you hide will hide from you. Can somebody type that for me? The grace you celebrate will celebrate you, but the grace you hide will hide from you. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. I just heard that one. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. I just heard that one. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide will hide from you. Write it down. Write it down. That is the version of the first lady. So that you will understand. The grace that you celebrate will celebrate you in returns. But the grace that you hide will hide from you as well. The grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide will hide from you. Some of you, you come like a thief in the night. You are not a thief. Come directly. Who are you afraid of? Some of you, you have become thieves. Some of you, you have become stealers of anointing. Some of you, you have become stealers of grace. The grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you in returns. Some of you, you come like a thief in the night because you don't want them to know that you have something to do with Evan Chapel so that they will also not put you aside so that you will also flow. Don't be a devil that eats from two tables and you don't want to show. Be proud of what you are doing. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you, but the grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you hide will hide from you. The grace you disgrace will disgrace you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. The grace you disgrace will disgrace you. But the grace you celebrate will celebrate you. You cannot hide from grace. And expect that grace to be obvious for you. No. The grace you hide from hides from you. The grace you celebrate celebrates you. The grace you celebrate will celebrate you. But the grace you hide hides from you. It's as simple as that. You celebrate the Lord, the Lord celebrates you. You testify, the Lord gives you more testimony. You hide the testimonies of the Lord, the Lord takes away the testimony from you. It is not my word. It is in the book of Psalm, chapter 107. The book of Psalm, chapter 107. That is what we are reading about today. That is what we are talking about today. The book of Psalm. The book of Psalm, chapter 107. 
Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food. They were knocking on their door. Lord, help me. They cried in trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the doors of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious heart. Offer thanksgiving. Let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. The Bible calls it what? Sacrifice of thanksgiving. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. Have you given, have you offered sacrifice of thanksgiving before? Hmm? And you want to have a testimony. You want to have a testimony, but you have never offered sacrifice of thanksgiving. My children, learn to practice the Bible and let the word of God work for you. Learn to practice the Bible. Let the word of God work for you. Don't just be hearers of the word. Be practitioners of the word of God. And let the word of God work for you. This one is not prophecy that you say it will fail you. This one is not somebody telling you. It is the Bible telling you. And the Bible does not lie. The Bible cannot fail. Practice it and let it work for you. If you are not a testifier. The Lord says let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. If you're not a testifier, go and offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let God release a testimony for you. Let God give you a testimony. Say, my own, I am tired. I am going to give a sacrifice of thanksgiving because I need a testimony. I'm tired. I need a testimony. I am tired. I need a testimony. I am tired. I need a testimony. I don't know why people will be calling me when I am live. Does it mean that they cannot see that I am live? That I am live, they will be calling me on messenger. Please keep on engaging the brokers. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. You, you, some, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Because you are not a testifier. Father, I need a testimony of my own. I am tired to live like this without a testimony. I am going to offer. I am going to offer. And I'm going to offer sacrifice of testimony. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let God give me my own testimony. From January to December, I don't have a testimony. From January till now, I don't have a testimony. Everybody is testifying. Let your sacrifice. Maybe the witches and your wizards in your family, they have given a sacrifice to their juju priest. That is why you cannot testify. Maybe the witches in your husband's family, they have given sacrifice to their juju god. That is why you cannot testify. Maybe the juju people, they have taken sacrifice. That is why you cannot testify. You too go and give God a sacrifice so that he can break the storm of no testimony. You too go and sacrifice to God so that he can break the yoke of no testimony. You to go and sacrifice to God so that he can break the storm of testimony. If people can sacrifice to the gods, if people can sacrifice at the shrine, if people can sacrifice at places, why can you not sacrifice in the house of God? Why can you not sacrifice to? Abraham gave God a sacrifice. Sacrifice moves God. Sacrifice moves God. Don't wait until when you are comfortable. Then you go and offer. Don't wait until when you are so rich, you go and offer. No. When you give, when you give, when you have it, God is not moved. The, God, the, the, the Lord is moved by sacrifice. Sacrifice moves God. Sacrifice moves God. Sacrifice opens heaven. Sacrifice breaks the storm. Sacrifice breaks the yoke. Sacrifice opens doors. For your breakthrough. And then you begin to testify. You begin to be a testifier. He says let them give what? A sacrifice of thanksgiving. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. Some of you you are waiting when God does it. And then you will come and uh, you will come and uh, thanksgive. No. Hear about thanking him before he does it. Hear about thanking him before. For the blessing you are about to receive. Hear about thanking him. That is what I said in this meeting. I said, all of you pocket your offerings and keep for the last day. 
And then you come and you break the storm that last day. Some of you will still be here and not break that storm at the end of the day. And you will say, I don't have. I don't have. Continue. That is how you will not have till the day you get in your grave. You will go and have in the grave. Because you don't obey instruction. That is why you're not a testifier. They say stand, you don't want to stand. They say sit, you don't sit. When they are breaking storm of testimony, you are breaking your storm of poverty. They are breaking storm of de delay. You are breaking storm of, of stagnation. You don't obey, obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That is what the Bible taught us. The Bible says, the Bible says, let them offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious heart. Some went off some went off to the sea in ship, playing the trade route of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action. When you do this thing, you observe the Lord's power in action. Oh my God. May the Lord bless David. You, when you do these things, you too, you watch the Lord's action. The Lord's power in action. We are reading Psalm 107. And I'm reading verse 24 now, in case you are lost. When they too observe the Lord, when they too observe the Lord's power in action, they too observe the Lord's power in action. You will see God in action. You will see the power of God in action. It is not me. His impressive work on the deepest sea. He spoke and the wind rose, staring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to heaven. And they pluck again to the death and the salons rings in terror. They were, they, were, they were reeled and staggered like drunkards. And they were at their wit's end. Lord help, they cry in trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and sealed the waves. What a blessing was that. What a blessing was that stillness as though it brought them safety into Abba. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and let the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them exclaim him publicly before the congregation. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation. Take this one and go and read for your gossip partners and tell them, no, it is the right thing to give testimony. Why did you not encourage me to go and give testimony? Go and tell the shyness in your life what the Lord is saying in the scripture. Go and tell the devil that is bringing shame of shame upon your life, the scripture that God is saying. Go and tell the devil that is holding down your mouth from the shame of letting leave you so that you can testify. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation. The Lord did not give you a testimony to go and share to your family members. He did not give you a testimony for you to go and keep it. Don't come here and ask God for a testimony if you are not a testifier. If you know that you are not going to turn. If you are not going to turn from your evil ways and seek God in spirit and in truth, there is no point. God cannot be mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that he will reap. God can never be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he will be mocked. If you are here and you are shy to give testimony, go and take deliverance. You need deliverance. If you are here and you are shy when God does something for you, you say, I'm shy, I cannot testify. You need deliverance. From the evil spirit, there is an evil spirit in your body that is causing shyness because shyness is a sin. A child of God is not permitted to be ashamed because God says, I have not given to you the spirit of fear. God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but he has given to us a spirit of sound mind. Spirit of a sound mind is what God has given you. So when you have the spirit of shyness in your body, you are ashamed to the glory of God. Then you need deliverance because the devil is going to put you into shyness and you will go to hellfire with your shyness because that is a sin. Anytime you are ashamed, know that you are sinning against God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not a thing that you should be proud to tell somebody, I am shy. No. What are you shy of if you're not evil? No. The word of God is meant to change you. The word of God is meant to mold you. 
The, Lord, the word of God is meant to transform you. But if the word is not transforming you, then what is the essence of hearing the word? If you cannot change and the people that saw you say, oh, I have seen what God has done for this brother. This brother used to be very shy. But since this brother started going to church, this brother is so bold. This brother is so bold. This brother has changed and people will see that and come to God. May the Lord kick away that spirit, evil spirit in your body that is not allowing you to glorify him in the name of Jesus. May the Lord take away. Because he says, let them exalt me publicly before the congregation. And before the elders of the nation. The elders of the nation. God is not interested in private testimonies. He says publicly, underline the word publicly. Underline the word publicly. Exalt me in the public. And in the nations, exalt me in the public and in the nations, and I will give you more testimonies. David beat the brass for the Lord. David blow trumpet for the Lord. David sang Hosanna for the Lord. David gave God midnight. David did worships for God. David did praises for God because he knew that his testimony springs up from those ones. But you, you keep your testimonies. You hide them. You say, oh, God did it. I've already said, God, I, I, thank you now. I've already told God, thank you. Some of you will call me and share your testimonies with me. Familiarity. Is it not familiarity that is causing that? Some of you will share your testimony with me. You will call me and share your testimonies. Familiarity. And you, when you finish sharing the testimony, I should write it and publish it, right? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Learn to testify to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. He changes river into desert and springs of water into dry, testy land. He turns the fruitful land into salty western land because of the wickedness of those who live there. There is how you can bring calamity upon your life. There is how you can bring delay in your life. There is how you can bring frictions in your life. Some of you, your life is delayed as a result of something. Some of you, your life is delayed. There is stagnation as a result of something. In order for testimony to come, you need to break the yoke of not being a testifier. You cannot get more testimony when you did not testify. You eat every day, but you are ashamed to testify every day. You go, you, you take a shower every day, but you are ashamed to testify every day. You go to market every day. You go to your work every day. And you are so wonderful in that job. But you forget to testify to God's glory every day. How can the Lord give you more testimony when you are not a testifier? If I give you my food today, you did not eat the food. You keep the food. I cannot give you my food tomorrow. That means you don't like the meal. That means you don't like my cooking. I will stop giving it to you. Exactly the same thing God does. If God gives you something, you don't testify. You are telling him that I don't appreciate what you're doing. Stop it. And then he takes it away because there are so many people who are waiting for testimonies. There are so many people who are waiting for God's blessings. There are so many people who are dying for God's blessing. So if God does something for you and you refuse to testify, you are telling God, I don't need your testimony. Take it elsewhere. And that is how God sees it. He says, oh, this one is not grateful. I better go and give it to somebody that is grateful. Somebody that will thank me. Somebody that will glorify my name. Let me go and give it to that person. Let us learn to be testifiers. Because of the wickedness of those who live there. But also turn desert into pools of water. The dry land into springs of water. He brings the hungry to settle them. And to build their cities. They sow their fields. Plant their vineyards and harvest their bomba crops. How he blesses them. They raise large family day and their heads of livestock increase. When they decrease in number and became impervious through oppression, trouble and sorrows, the Lord pours content on their, princi on their princes, causing them to, water, to wander in, in tireless waterland. In tireless waterland, and they rescues the poor from trouble and increases their family like floods of sheep. The godly will see those things and be glad, while the wicked are stuck in silence. The wicked are stuck in silence. 
Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to read that again. Look at that. I'm going to read verses, verses 41 again. Let us take 41 again. Let us take 41 again. Let us take 41 again. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their family like flocks of sheep. The godly will see these things and be glad. Listen, the godly will see these things and be glad. There is a godly person that is here today. He will hear this thing and he will be glad. And there is an ungodly person that is here today. As they are hearing this word, they are getting mad like this. In fact, if they have their way, they will slap me. If they have their way, they will log off. But they cannot log off because they know that if they log off, probably I will know and I will be mad with them. Some people are so ungodly that if they have their way right now, they will even break my phone and in fact, jail me for preaching this word. They will be so mad. They are so mad in their spirit because they are ungodly. But the godly man will hear the word and will say, oh, thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you, Jesus, that I have my eyes are open to light. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that she broke the word of God in Psalm 107 for me. Maybe I have read this psalm before, but I didn't understand the scripture like this. Maybe I did not even take my time to understand the scripture because I was just reading in the flesh. It is not the Holy Spirit that was leading me. I could not really get it. But today, with the help of your daughter, I can understand what you are saying, Lord. Thank you for this word that has come to transform me. Thank you for this word that has come to change me. Thank you for this word that will bring me testimony. Oh, some people will still say, hey, foolish woman. Look at what she's saying. I know she's talking to me. Some of you, because of familiarity, some of you, because of familiarity, your pastor will preach. You will say your pastors are preaching you. How will you know that your pastors are preaching you? Is it not because you're close to them? Is it not because you're talking to them? That is why when they come and preach a message of the Lord, you will say that they are talking about you. If you're guilty of a message, why can you not repent? Because of familiarity, because of these things that you people say. Men of God are afraid to preach the gospel. Women of God are afraid to preach the gospel. Because you will say they are preaching about you. They are preaching about you. What did you do that they are preaching about you? What do you have that a man of God will come and be preaching about you? If you feel guilty about the word of God, my dear, go and repent. Stop saying people are preaching about you. You are not the Holy Spirit that is using those people to preach. If you are guilty about the word of God, just repent. That means the word came for you to repent. Not for you to go and tell the woman of God, you are preaching about me. Any day that any of you message me and say, Mommy, you were talking something about me. I will, I will screenshot it and I will post it. This nonsense has to stop. You people need to change your lifestyle. You need to change your characters. You need to change your attitude. You need to change your lifestyle. When the word of God comes, let it change you. Not for you to say that they, they are preaching about you. Who are you? Are you the one that wrote the Bible? Are you the one that wrote the Bible? If you're feeling guilty, go and repent. Go and repent. I didn't write the Bible. The way the Holy Spirit is teaching me the Bible. That is how I will teach the Bible. So if you feel that I'm talking about you, you are your own. When you have a guilty conscience, please go and repent. Don't blame your guilty conscience on anybody. I am liable to what I say. I am not liable to what you understand. I am only liable for the things I am saying. I am not liable for what you understand. You can understand whatever you choose to understand, but I am not liable to your understanding. I am not liable to, I am not going to prove no point to you. It is irrelevant to even waste your time to tell me. It is irrelevant to even waste your time to think that I'm going to mind you. It's irrelevant. My own, eh? I am very good at ignoring people. This is one of the gifts that God gave me. I am very good. I can silence you like this, eh? Hey, some of my daughters, they know it. I can silence you in a way that you will be wondering, this woman, is it that she doesn't understand that I exist? Is it that she doesn't understand that I'm here? Because I have come to understand that silence is the best answer to a fool. Instead of dragging weights, instead of trading weights, instead of quarreling, just silence. Silence is golden. That is one of the golden rules. Silence. Silence is golden. Silence is maturity. Silence is classic. Silence is... Go I don't know the word to use for silence. You can never regret your silence. When you are quiet over a thing, even people will be asking, who are you talking to? They will turn around and say, ah, you are talking to this woman and she's not minding you. Silence is golden. Children of God, practice silence. It is very golden. In your marriage, 
in your relationship, at your jobs, in your dealing with people, be silenced. Silence is golden. Silence is golden. That is why sometimes it's like God is not listening to us because he is silenced. If God was to listen to everything we say, we say, oh, hey, God, God doesn't like me. That is why he doesn't bless me. God doesn't like me. That is why he doesn't give me a testimony. God doesn't like me. That is why he doesn't do this. God doesn't like me. Some of us, we have told God these things, but God remains silent because he knows that silence is the golden rule. Let us be like our maker and learn to follow the concept and the precept of our Alpha and Omega. But he rescues the poor. I am reading Psalm 41 again. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their families like floods of sheep. The godly will see those things and be glad. While the wicked are struck silent. Are you seeing that? The godly will see these things and be glad. There is a, there is a brother here. There is a sister here who is saying, I thank God for this message today. I, br I bless the name of the Lord that I am in this service today. And there is another brother, another sister who is here saying, Hey, that woman of God. So she came live to talk about me. Hey, so that woman of God. So she just locked onto a live broadcast to speak about me. Guilty conscience. When you are guilty, my brother, repent. When you are guilty, my sister, repent. It's a call for repentance. Nobody is here to do anything. Nobody is taking your money. Nobody is interested in your wealth. When the word comes and you are guilty of that word, it is a call for repentance. It is time for you to repent genuinely from your heart. That is why you felt it. The reason you felt guilty is because the word was for you. The word is not meant to break you, but to change you and mold you. Everybody is proud to say, I was a prostitute, but now I am no longer a prostitute. I was a lesbian, but now I'm not a lesbian. I was a thief, but now I'm not a thief. I was a liar but now i'm not a liar let the word change you so that you will say i used to be jealous about this woman of god when she's preaching i used to be envy i used to be full of hatred when she's preaching but today i am a changed person my daughter mary said something to me he said mommy see let me tell you something if you like shout if you like uh, 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 do whatever you're doing. If you like, push me. Even if you mention my name directly and say, Mary, leave the broadcast. Me, I'm not going anywhere because I know you. Know people personally. Stop judging people by your evil heart. Stop judging people by your own uh, 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 mindset. You have already positioned it in your mind and then you pour it out. No, it is wrong. So some of you will still say, oh, this word, this word, this word, this word. But there are people that they know you. Even in your anger, they know that, you know what? For her to say this thing, that means she's really moved to say it. There are people that will say, ah, I've never seen her like this. For her to go this extent, that means there is something. But there are people that no matter how nice you are, they will still say the same thing. So sweetheart, don't live your life to impress people. The godly will see those things and be glad. Why the wicked will be stuck in silence? Those who are wise will take. To, those who are wise will take all this to heart. Listen, oh, those who are wise will take all of these things to their hearts. Those they will see. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Those who are wise. I am standing on Psalm forty-three. I am anchoring on Psalm forty-three. This is where I am elaborating all of this from. The Bible says that those who are wise will take all this to heart. Those who are wise, they will take it. Those who are unwise, they will condemn it. They will destroy it and it will not work for them. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Oh, amanam kanam barabao. Amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabá so song o Jesus amanam o, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao so song o abasi amanam o, amanam kanam barabao. Amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, so somo abasi amanam o, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, so somo Emmanuel amanam o, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao, so 
Hey, Jesus, you have done so much. I cannot count it any longer. Jesus, you have done too much that I cannot even pin them down. Thank you. That is what I am singing in my dialect. You have done, you have done, you have done, you have done. I have lost count. I cannot count again the goodness of God. I cannot count again the diverse testimonies. I cannot count again the goodness of God's mercy. Look at it. A case of where somebody was dead. And Jesus, they wrote the name and put in the casket. She did not even write the name of Jesus. She just wrote the name, First Lady Evan Chapel, put it in the casket, and her sister came back to life. Jesus, you have done. Mommy, please explain the meaning of the song, please. And you guys like it, right? The Lord has done it. You've done it, I cannot count. You've done it, I cannot count. You've done it, I cannot count. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. You've done it, I cannot count again. You've done it, I cannot count again. You've done it, I cannot count again. Thank you. You have done it, you have done it, I cannot count again. You've done it, I cannot count again. You've done it, I cannot count again. Thank you. You have done it, Lord. You have done it, I cannot count. You have done it, I cannot count. Lord, you have done it, I cannot count. Thank you. Abasi amanamo, amanam kanam barabao. Amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao. So song of Emmanuel, amanamo, amanam kanam barabao. Amanam kanam barabao, amanam kanam barabao. So song You have done it too much, Lord, that I cannot count. If I had a 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough for me to sing to your diverse things that you have done. Today that we came to break the storm of testimony, I just wanted to take a minute to brag about this God. For the diverse things that he has done in this ministry. I just wanted to take a moment to brag about Jesus. I hear people say, I have done this, I have done that. Hear about God that did everything. I just want you to take a minute or two. Begin to thank God for what he did in your life. Tell the Lord, Father, I have heard your word. Let me be a testifier. Father, I have decided to give uh, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. A sacrifice of thanksgiving just to move heaven. Sacrifice of thanksgiving just to move the throne of grace. Testifies of thanksgiving just so I can have my testimony. Every young grateful spirit, every young grateful heart, every young grateful storm that has lingered my testimony, that has limited my testimony. Today, as we break the storm of no testimony, let there be a testimony in my home. Today, as I break the storm of no testimony, let there be a testimony in my life. Today, as I break the storm of no testimony, let there be a testimony in my ministry. Let there be a testimony in my marriage. Let there be a testimony in my job. Let there be a testimony about my children. Let there be a testimony of my promotion. Let there be a testimony of my documents. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we break the storm of no testimony, to anyone that was, that, that was not having a testimony, take a testimony home today. To anyone that didn't have a testimony, take a testimony home today. To anyone that is lacking a testimony, I release your testimonies. I release your testimonies. I release your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. He has promised. He will never fail. I will follow. I will follow him. My God has promised. He will never fail me. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness. He is forevermore. He has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. He will not fail. I will follow. I will follow him. God has promised. He will never fail. He is faithful. 
is forever more. His faithfulness is forever more. One more time, he has promised he will never fail. He will never fail, and I will follow. I will follow him. God has promised. He will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore. Glory to Jesus, my God, my God, my God, my God. So as the Lord releases your testimony, you're going to be a testifier. From that day henceforth, I decree and I declare you a testifier. Whatever storm was holding your testimony, whatever breach was holding your testimony, whatever yoke was holding your testimony, wherever your testimony was kept, uh, any foundation that was holding your testimony, every storm over your testimony, any one that was sitting on your testimony, uh, today by the mandate of which I operate upon, uh, I unseat every demon from your testimony. I break every storm over your testimony. I break every yoke over your testimony. I destroy every storm over your testimony. The yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. That yoke of no testimony is broken. That yoke of no testimony is broken. Any devourer that comes and steals your testimonies, any demon that steals your testimony, when the Lord blesses you, they take your testimony. Today, by this day 16 of Thedia, every storm over your testimony, Testimonies be broken in the name of Jesus. Every storm over your testimonies be broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody says, Angel, don't count me out uh, in this testimony season. Don't count me out, angels. Uh, in this testimony season, uh, don't count me out, angels. Uh, in this testimony season, uh, you will not be counted out. Uh, in this testimony season, uh, you will not be counted out. Uh, in this testimony season, uh, you will not be counted out. Uh, in this testimony period, you will not be counted out. In this testimony period, you will not be counted out. I put you in for a testimony. I write your name for a testimony. I put your family in for a testimony. I put your husband in for a testimony. I put your children in for a testimony. You will testify in your going out and your coming in. Every storms of testimony over your lives is here by broken. Every plaque that was covering your testimonies uh, is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. Uh, any storm that was standing at the force of your testimony, uh, I break them in the name of Jesus. Uh, any thunder that was striking your testimonies, uh, I uncover them in the name of Jesus. Uh, every wind that was blowing off your testimonies, uh, I remove them in the name of Jesus. Uh, any star that was covering your testimonies, uh, I remove them in the name of Jesus. Uh, any moon that was distracting your testimonies, uh, I remove them in the name of Jesus. Uh, any man or woman uh, that has been sitting on your testimony, uh, let them fall down by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh. In the name of Jesus, uh, every bondage that is holding your mouth from testifying, uh, let them break out in the name of Jesus. Uh, that evil spirit of shyness in your body uh, that is stopping your testimony from manifesting, uh, let them break out in the name of Jesus. Uh, whatever is causing you to become an ingrate unto God, uh, let them break out in the name of Jesus. Uh, whatever the Lord is doing in this season, uh, don't put them out, Lord Jesus. Don't put them out, Lord Jesus. Uh, don't put them out, Lord Jesus, uh, in this testimony season, uh, you will not be put out in the name of Jesus. In this testimony period, uh, you will not be put out in the name of Jesus. Uh, you are a testifier. Uh, I decree and I declare unto you, uh, you are the next to testify. Uh, you are the next testifier. Uh, you are the next testifier. Uh, you are the next testifier. Uh, you are the next to testify. Uh, a testimony that will shake the world. A testimony that will blind people. A testimony that will sound like 
that are lying. Her testimony that will break every yoke. Her testimony that will bring souls to God. Let the Lord release your testimonies. Let the Lord release your testimonies. Every evil storm, every evil spirit, every evil chain, every evil yoke, every manipulating power, every witches and wizard, every occultic power, kingdom of darkness, shrines and powers, witches and wizards, whatever forces was holding your testimony. Today I pull them dead. Today I pull them down. 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 You evil strong man standing. You evil strong woman standing. Today I pull you down. 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 In the name of Jesus. Whatever the Lord is doing in this season. Whatever the Lord is doing in this period, whatever the Lord is doing in this hour, whatever the Lord is doing in this month, you shall not be counted out. You shall not be counted out. You shall not be counted out. It is time for your testimony. It is a season for your testimony. It is a period for your testimony. It is a year of your testimony. It is the hour of your testimony. It is the second of your testimony. Go and testify like never before. Go and receive a testimony. In your coming in, you shall see a testimony testimony. In your going out, you shall see a testimony. Life shall be transformed through your testimonies. Miracles shall take place through your testimony. I see the Lord releasing testimonies. I see the Lord releasing testimony. To those who have never testified, receive a heart shocking testimony. To those who are not testifiers, receive an heart shocking testimony. Receive an heart shocking testimony. Receive an heart shocking testimonies. Receive an heart shocking testimonies. Receive an heart shocking testimonies. Testimonies that will silence the grave. Testimony that will silence your enemy. Testimony that will silence your accusers. Testimonies that will silence your, your, your mockers. Testimony that will silence people that are ridiculing you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare this atmosphere open with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare this atmosphere open with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy today. The storm over no testimonies is broken. In the name of Jesus. That storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus. That storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus, that storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus, that storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus, that storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus, that storm over no testimony is over. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy unto you right now. You are a testifier. Men shall call you testimony. Women shall call you testimony. Children shall call you testimony. Because of the wondrous thing that God is going to do for you. And so shall it be permanent. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It was an honor and a wonderful time for me to have you in God's presence. You already know that I love you so much with the love of God. And my greatest wish above all wishes is heaven at last. Remember, tomorrow is our Holy Communion service. And we are starting exactly 11 a.m. MST. MST. 11 a.m. MST. We are starting the Holy Communion service. And that is like 6 p.m. African time in Nigeria to be precise. 6 p.m. Nigerian time, 11 a.m. Canada, Calgary, MST time. We are going to be having our Holy Communion. God bless you. Until I see you again, by the special grace of God, remain ever blessed. I love you. Shalom.